go see the movies. Anniversary edition, edition, edition. Hey, so we, as of yet, April 2nd, married 15 years. And we celebrated in our quarantine by what else would we do besides watch a movie? It's well, what we yeah. do. And then review that movie. And then now we're going to review it for you. And as a special treat, we watched the very same movie that we watched while we were on our honeymoon in San Antonio, Texas. That's right. <laughs> we went to the movies well, because Elm Street. we were there for like a week, I think. We stayed um, uh, yeah. on the river walk there. And so we went to the movies one evening and the thing that was well, out. Well, it was a big movie at the time. I remember being excited about it. And we like, were going to go see that movie. We, I remember walking. Like we had to walk because we were staying at the river walk. I don't remember being excited. I remember, I remember being, being excited to see a the movie romantic type movie that was out about an awesome thing that happened of course that movie is, is fever pitch not the original maybe fever pitch we didn't know this was a remake until very recently starring jimmy fallon and drew barrymore and this follows a you know couple just trying to figure out like how do we how do we fall in love and make this work how do we fall jimmy in fallon love? plays a school teacher who loves the Boston Red Sox guys. Like, I mean, he loves. And he has two season tickets to... Right behind home plate. Uh, right by the dugout. And he inherited it from his uncle. Has all these special memories. It's really, really important to him. And I believe he goes to every single game. Although, after we watched the movie, I kind of wondered, well, he's a school teacher. What about day games? You can't just take, like, all those days off. But I don't know. The movie didn't answer that question. Drew Barrymore plays a career-driven, like, uh, woman who is... I don't know how else to describe that. <laughs> she does something with math in her, her job, but she's really into that. And she's you... a business person. <laughs> she's a businesswoman. Yeah. And she's all about business. I guess I don't identify, like, so I, I can't really You're describe. You're a business woman. And then the movie also happens to follow the Red Sox season for the year this movie came out, which must be... So it follows the 2004 Boston Red Sox. And Kelsey, what would you tell the people of today? Go wait or skip. And I think you should go... This is quarantine. Go quarantine. Go see. <laughs> Have you not seen this movie? Go see this movie. Let me be honest with you. It's not a great movie. But um, Jimmy Fallon, everybody loves Jimmy Fallon and, and Drew Barrymore. They're both like pretty likable, even though Drew Barrymore's character maybe isn't super likable. She is. She's got something about her. Yeah. And so does Jimmy Fallon, except this was a long time ago. And so it's interesting to me to see how much Jimmy Fallon has grown since this role because... He seems like kind of unsure of himself in this role. He's still got that likable quality. Mm -hmm. But now, like, seeing all the stuff he's done and seeing how super talented he is today, he had that talent back then. He didn't really know how to use it in this movie, I don't think. And on top of that, you want to relive, or perhaps if you're young, too young to remember this, to an experience, one of the most amazing, at least partially one of the most amazing sports stories that's ever been, that season was amazing. I remember it well, and just what an amazing thing. When they made this movie, they did not plan for the Red Sox to win the World Series. They just assumed that they would not win it. So they actually had to re remake the end of the movie based on what happened. In reality. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I am going to say wait. <laughs> even in quarantine, Rachel? Well, I told you I'm not changing my go-away skin But you're quarantine. not even going to change it while you're in quarantine? <laughs> I'm going to say wait. I would have said skip, but the reason I'm saying wait is because, man, it is really fun to relive the 2004 yeah, I Red love that Sox team. baseball season because, I mean, that's the season when they did it. And, yeah. like, and we were watching baseball that whole season, mm -hmm. so they are showing clips of the game, and I recognize, like, all the guys. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that was a bit, we <laughs> love that team. So like it was it was really like it's really fun to to relive that the story you know the uh, between the couple the love story here yeah it's not a very good movie it is it's good I will say that this movie are we at spoilers no I will this movie gets better like at first I was like oh this movie's bad but then as it went on like I was like okay well 
I'm, I'm not hating. Stuff. I'm not sure. I, I feel like it's mostly the baseball stuff that makes it, like, better. Yeah. If I think about just the story, like, I just, man, it just wasn't very... Spoilers! Scary. The Red Sox won! Yay! Do you Red remember that? They were down three games to none against the New York Yankees. I remember this like it was yesterday. And, like, I remember, like, just... Because it doesn't happen all at once. It's like they won the one game, and then they win the other game. And then you're well, like, like, I think they're going to come they, back and do this. They got into the playoffs via the wild card. They're like, there's no way they're going to do this, right? And then they, they managed to come back in the in the wild card oh. series, right? And then, and then, like, they end up at the World Series. You have Kurt Schilling, the bloody sock. I mean, just like, all the things. They're getting extra innings, home runs, David Ortiz. And, man, that team, that team was amazing. And to beat, that was the only team, or the first, I don't know if they've done it since, but that was the first team to come back from down three games and then none. <laughs> and to do that against your rival, Curse of the Bambino, all that stuff, and then to go on and win the World Series, that was an amazing thing. Yeah. Spoiler, it was awesome. <laughs> Movie, not as awesome. Not as awesome. It was kind of... <gasps> what yes. if there was just a movie about the Red Sox? I'm sure that there is. <laughs> we should have just watched that, maybe. <laughs> So the, the movie, the love story, like with the, it just wasn't, it didn't have like enough, it definitely, like there wasn't any depth. Characters played, uh, what is that called? Like archetypes they played. It was like, oh, Don't use fancy words. your sister's going to be this character. And then you, like she was the career driven woman with like, she had three best friends and like they did stuff like all this, you know, things together, went to parties. But I, it just didn't feel like real life to me, you know. One was like supportive, somebody else was like kind of jealous, and like I don't know. And then he had like, I mean, he was a school teacher, but was like embarrassed about being a school teacher, and it was just hard for me to identify with it. And their like dialogue, like, it was kind of a giant child. I mean, I didn't like, know like why they fell in love. I'm like, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he was, he wasn't just, like, the I, reasons why she was embarrassed was because of, like, his, like, Red Sox fanatic behavior or because he didn't own enough suits and she wanted her parents to be impressed. I thought it was all kind of dumb and, and it wasn't like, it was, the real thing was that, like, he, he had some growing up to do, but, like, the stuff she pointed out, like, the lack of suits in his closet, that doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's dumb. I got a suit. I got a suit. <laughs> anyway, I just, it, it just, it was a pretty weak storyline. If it didn't have the baseball stuff yeah. in there, it, w it would. Oh. Pretty weak storyline that yeah. really had to be carried by the likability of, of two of actors, Drew Barrymore two and Jimmy Fallon. That are playing characters that maybe aren't showcasing likability, right? Yeah. So that's how likable. <laughs> Drew Barrymore and yeah. Jimmy Fallon are and were, and that's a quality that you can't really teach. They just either have it or you don't, they have it. Yeah. It did have a couple parts where, like, I laughed out loud. Yeah, when she... There was one early on with Jimmy Fallon when you thought he was gonna... She was like, oh, my favorite movie is Annie Hall. And he was like, are you yeah. kidding me? That's... Like, look what I got. And he pulls out Roadhouse. Yeah. Like, that was funny. But like, at the you know? same time, there were some of those bits were cringy. Like, I yes. was like, oh, that's oh, it's bad. This is yeah. bad. Why is this in this movie? <laughs> Why is this in this movie that we watched on our honeymoon? <laughs> about this awesome story with two likable people. Why is this in this movie? Yeah. So, I think you should watch it. <laughs> What's the part you liked with Drew Barrymore? I like when she, when she drops from the... When she goes over oh, the so like at the end so of the movie, up. she makes like this big grand gesture. It's like gesture. a big end. And I she's like hanging it. from the green monster in the outfield and falls down. And like you you see her hanging and you're like, she's going to break her man. ankles. Like that's a pretty good end. I movie. will say that when she fell, she did totally sell that it was a hard fall. She didn't break her ankles, but she like writhed yeah. in pain. Like it's funny. It's, it's a long fall in heels. It was a pretty like, good little end, I think. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it's the movie's like a, it, it, it definitely doesn't, like it starts where you're like, uh, <laughs> but then you're at the band of it, you're like, okay, I think I'm used to this. I don't know, I like it. I like this movie. Yeah. I'm glad, I tell you what I'm glad, I'm super glad about, looking back at it, 
I'm so glad that we were forward thinking enough to have bought the widescreen edition DVD, Rachel. <laughs> Remember widescreen versus the other screen? There used to be other screen editions. Right, right. So here's the thing. It's I don't so know. That's Kelsey such a long time ago. To go watch this movie, I don't actually know how you're going to watch it. I have no idea if this movie's streaming on anything. We happen to own the DVD. Widescreen edition. Because we purchased it because it was a movie we saw on our honeymoon and we wanted to mark like the thing. And so we marked that occasion by purchasing the DVD. And yes, we did get the widescreen edition. So I'm grateful that we got that widescreen edition. Yeah, imagine had we not. We would have been watching it in what, like yeah. a square on our... Yeah. I don't even know how that works. Thanks for watching for Chelsea at the Movies, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That's actually how you can wish us, wish us happy anniversary. Like, And we and also accept money! <laughs>